Concerns and criticism are mounting over potential consequences of having foreign military bases on Nigerian soil. Northern activists and the new Nigerian People's Party, NNPP, have cautioned the federal government against allowing the United States and France to have foreign military bases in Nigeria. France and the United States no longer have military bases in some parts of the Sahel in West Africa. Thus, the need for a new military base is said to be in the pipeline, preferably in Nigeria. In March, Niger ordered all U.S. troops to leave the country. Military spokesperson Colonel Amadou Abdramain accused the U.S. of raising objections about the allies that Niger had chosen. Also, the withdrawal of French forces was swiftly demanded by Niger's military government after they took power on July 26, with French President Emmanuel Macron then confirming their departure at the end of September. However, as events unfold, Russian troops have been deployed to an airbase in Niger where American soldiers are located. Hello guys, how are you doing? I hope you're doing fine wherever you are. And if you're not doing fine, please do fine. Now, today I want us to talk about Nigeria. For the second time, the people of Igbo, the Yoruba people, the Fulani people, our brothers from the West, the white, green, white flag are again Yes, they're again pissed off. But this time, the Nigerians, our brothers, are pissed off by some people from the West. This time, it's not from the East. You know, the other day, they were pissed off by the Chinese. But today, they are pissed off by the Americans. The United States government has pissed off Nigerians. The people of Igbo, the Oga, are now pissed off by the idea that the United States of America is planning to plant uh, military bases in Nigeria. But Nigerians, Nigerians as in the citizens, and the Nigerian government is not pleasing, is not pleased by this idea. And so the people of Nigeria, including the elites, the scholars of Nigeria, have come up forward and they're against this idea. And this is what they have to say. I want us to watch this video. Let's listen to why and how they why and how they want to refuse this and then by the end of the video we will have a critical analysis where i'll also share my thoughts uh, by the end of the video so let's dive in right away about this development and i hope it is not true we have a long history about attempts at installing a military base in Nigeria. you recall, no, you won't recall, you are too young. Um, at the time of our independence, there was this attempt by the British to install a military base in Nigeria. Uh, it was raised in Parliament. Students from University of uh, Ibadan came on a march and there was a brouhaha and finally they killed that project. Therefore, this will not be the first time that there will be an attempt to have a military base in Nigeria if it is true that there is such an attempt. The last thing Nigeria wants is to have a military base by a superpower in counterpoise to another superpower because in a way Russia moving into Niger, into Mali, into Burkina Faso. The United States moving into Nigeria brings us actually right into confrontation with each other. And that's the last thing we want. I know that we have problems with the jihadists, with ISIS, uh, we, we, we have security problems, yes, but the solution is not for us to be in confrontation with another superpower. 
we will simply, we will simply, you know, our, our, we will maximize our problems. Therefore, I hope it is not true. I hope it is not true. All right. Um, you, you say, thank you so much, Prof, that we will maximize our problems. And um, I think this also shares the, some sentiments raised by the leaders who had re written in opposition of Nigeria hosting these military bases. Um, aside from the perhaps, um, you know, the conflict with Russia host, hosting military bases in all these other countries, what are some of the other challenges? Because some people might say that it would be to the benefit of the country in terms of what we would get in added support against fighting terrorism, shoring up our military bases, support in that era if we're to host um, France and the United States of America. Would that not be a good enough argument for, um, even if it might not go well with the Russians in the other countries? No, because if the presence of France and the United States have been beneficial to in the Sahel, those countries will not be asking them to leave. Obviously, they have not found it beneficial. That's number one. Number two, all you've done is to bring the jihadists and the ISIS and the East-West to bring them further down towards Nigeria. Really, right now, um, Mali, uh, Mali uh, uh, and, and the other countries, you know, have been, if you like, uh, they, they, they've been a buffer between us and ISIS. Now that you will be removing the United States and what have you, you've brought them right to the border with Nigeria. But that there is a, a point that bothers me. And that is, I wish those Nigerians who have raised this issue have done it on a national platform. Recall I said at the beginning of my presentation that when the British tried it, the whole country was mobilized. Why would the whole country not be mobilized at this time um, to show that there is a national opposition rather than exceptional opposition to the fair. It bothers me. You know, the, the whole issue about sectionalization that came up when um, Niger, uh, the issue of Niger, when the coup took place, when it came up, some of us raised an alarm about the sectionalization and I think it is showing its head, it's rearing its head again. If there's a problem, it's going to be a national problem. It's not going to be a sectional problem. And I know some of the people who have signed these letters. They are my friends. We've been friends for a long time. And what is starting to manifest in their behavior is alarming. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, let's explore that conversation first. Don't they have a right to sign a letter? Because in their own estimation, they are going to be the first hit if anything happens. I mean, you remember how also they raised the brouhaha about the Niger border then when the president was about to go to war you know, with Niger, before that was stopped and that was not passed by the Senate. So don't they have a right to raise a lot? But secondly, I'd like to ask, so if you are saying the West shouldn't come in, or she shouldn't have a best in Nigeria, so are we going to leave 
this region to the Russians that are already having partnership with all this, I don't want to use the word renegade, but let me use the word renegade. Renegade governments like Niger, the Malis of this world and all of that. Are you going to not leave the Russians to have a full swing there to probably set up their own architecture around there because they are chummy with this government? Because in all fairness, some will argue with you that we had Operation Bakan that spanned from 2014, I think it was the time of Francois Hollande then, to recently when he was just stopped, which was costing the French about one billion a year, that kept some stability in the region as regards fighting the insurgents and all of that. Not total stability, but some level of stability. So are we now going to now leave? Because you know, Prof, that nature abhors a vacuum. If you say the French and the Americans should not have bases there, the Russians will have third party there. Already, uh, Alexander Prigozhin's outfit is already looming large across the African continent. We see their effects in what is happening in the fight with Hameti and his friend in Sudan and al -Bernam. So look at these implications. Let's look at it properly, sir. Well, I, I, I see your point. If there is a problem in the North, it is a problem. It is the Nigerian army, not the Northern army, that is going to uh, be engaged in the problem. Do not let us sectionalize Nigeria when a problem arises. After all, when we went to Ekomog, did we just send troops from... Ogun State, did we just send troops from uh, Oyo State? No, we sent Nigerian troops. That's the point I am making. I don't want it to spread. It is spreading. This sectionalization is spreading. And really, I think that the, 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 the I think the president actually ought to call a meeting of the Nigerian foreign policy elite. Let him nationalize it. Let, them, let him call them to a meeting in the villa. Uh, first of all, that will send a signal to Nigerians that, you know, he is talking to the elite. And number two, let him then tap into the brains that are available in this country. Number two, you, you raised the question about, well, with uh, Wagner already, you know, in the Sahel, what are we going to, I mean, what should Nigeria do in a way that you're asking that question? And my answer would be, for God's sake, Nigeria is a big country. If we cannot no, if we not set up our own assets in order to face down Wagner, then there is a problem somewhere. The amount of money that we have spent, this is since the time of, um, even since the time of General Lobasanjo, remember his uh, face off with the military of defense, uh, 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 with Malu, letting him know that, you know, the Nigerian armed forces, you know, does not need the, 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 the Americans to come here. This is not a new problem, you know. This has been going on since 1999. I, I, I mean, are we saying that you know, the Nigerian troops cannot, if properly organized, you see, we don't let us export uh, our problems. I know 
we have problems within the Nigeria Armed Forces. Let us sort that out. But let's not sort it out by bringing the Americans. You bring in the Americans, you bring them in with their own problems. We shouldn't do that. Okay, Prof. I, <clears throat> I get your point about national security and all of that. But there used to be in place a presidential foreign policy advisory council. Does that body still exist? Is uh, the uh, Tinubu administration in any way interfacing with that body? <clears throat> Secondly, where is the role of the Nigeria Institute of International Affairs in all of this? Because the NIA is supposed to also be an advisory think tank uh, to the uh, uh, government. And then finally, what other option do you think is available uh, to the United States? Because if they don't uh, stay on the border of Nigeria, they probably will go to another country. Because at the end of the day, America will pursue its own strategic interest. Um, you know, when you are dealing with foreign policy matters, as you very well know, because I will, you, you were in the corridor uh, um, when Jonathan was there, there are certain things that you don't say uh, publicly. So um, what uh, NI is doing, um, the... Uh, foreign policy, or what they may be doing or may not be doing, uh, I wouldn't really want to say uh, publicly. Um, but I also believe that there is a need for the president to sent a signal to Nigeria that he is consulting with the Nigerian foreign policy elite. It's not just these two bodies that you have mentioned. Um, you, 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 well, no, you won't recall. Look, we used to have public... Uh, we, we, we used to have public issues that we manifest publicly to let Nigerians know that we are on top of this situation. You, you, you are just doing it now. But I recall that NIA used to do this. Uh, when I was there, uh, and it used to do this when um, I can tell you one another, you know, uh, DJs were there. There is a function that publicity serves, not in, <laughs> I mean, not to tell. Nigerians, everything that you are doing, but there is a, a, a function that it serves. It also, when I remember, I recall when General Obasanjo during his first term um, was there, uh, every Saturday he used to have a meeting with the elite in this country where issues a need again to do that. Um, as I think, uh, I think it was Rufa who said, you know, uh, uh, something about uh, not having um, a vacuum. And this is what you are doing. You know, you are moving into the vacuum to ensure that Nigerians are aware 
that you know we have a problem and we do have a problem when you know you have you know americans and the and this is what i'm saying americans and the russians are having a face off they're having a face off in um, in ukraine and you know it's like you know they, they, you want them to have a face off i'm not saying that you know arise wants them to have a face off Again, uh, in the Sahel, no, it's not the kind of thing that we want. Fine. Okay, Prof. Thank you. Now, on the flip side, Nigeria has enjoyed, you know, quite a good relationship diplomatically with the United States of America, sharing ideas. We receive support, even military and training from the from the United States. In the event that we reject the perhaps um, the 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 desire or want to establish their military base or a military base in Nigeria. How do you think that would impact on diplomatic relationships between Nigeria and the United States of America? Or will there be any impact at all? Um, this is not the this is not the first time that Nigeria and the United States will have a conversation on this issue of having a military base. Uh, but there was a time when the United States raised this issue of having a, uh, uh, a West African base for the United States. And several West African countries were um, consulted. Uh, and at the end of the day, Nigeria turned down the proposal. Nigeria was not the only country. Liberia was also consulted. And pressure was brought by other West African countries. You know, it's not really the interest of Nigeria is not the only country that is going to be affected if we decide to have an American base in Nigeria. The, 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 uh, the, Nigeria and the United States have a broad base, what I say, a broad based interest that, you know, overrides just having a military base. Uh, I mean, after all, when we turned down the British base in 1960, our relationship did not come crashing down. No, it continued. We will simply reformat our relationship. I understand the fact that the United States the presence of Wagner in the Sahel. But I just believe that we need in, in the interest of Nigeria, we need to format our own relationship, uh, uh, reformat how we will deal with that problem. I'm not sure that bringing in American bases who have their own interest, their own interest is not just uh, the, the jihadists. That's not the only interest America has. America has other problems okay. which may not be coterminous with the Nigerian. So, back then during the Cold War times, we had two superpowers. We had the USSR and we had the United States of America. 
these people were fighting on different ideological differences, hence the name Cold War. The USSR was uh, trying to spread uh, the economic discipline of communism, or if you like, socialism. And the United States of America was really trying hard to spread uh, the economic um, discipline of capitalism, you know, or if you like, capitalistic uh, investment. It was not only about economy, we also had the space race where we saw Russia put the first man into the moon. He was called Yuri Gagarin. Yuri Gagarin was the first man to be taken to the moon. And then the next year we saw uh, the American Neil Armstrong being taken to the moon as well. It was a project by the United States of America. Now, the Cold War involved a lot of uh, activities, involved a lot of, uh, of propaganda and this and that, you know. And so during that time, a terminology was also invented. The terminology that was invented is uh, what we now call uh, the domino effect. One of the presidents of the United States of America uh, made, made it popular, uh, the domino effect. The domino effect, uh, as you understand what is a domino, is once, say for instance, your neighbor house is burning and your house are attached, it's adjacent, the, your house is likely to catch fire and the other house is also likely to catch fire and this, this is called the domino effect. And so the, the white people or the people from USA were really, really adamant and they didn't entertain the idea of neighboring countries that were communist. They tried so hard to punish those countries out of communism, you know? And that is just communism. And now, something else different is happening in Africa. The same, same superpowers that we had during the Cold Wars are the same, same that we're having today. Now we have the West. We have the West, which is uh, USA predominantly. We have France. Uh, yeah, USA and France, mostly. And now on the other side we have Russia, the same old Russia. The Russia that was once the great USSR. Now it's been dismantled to only Russia, which is now the biggest part of the USSR. Union of the Soviet Socialist Republic. So, what's interesting is that Nigerians in, South, in uh, West Africa are also kicking out uh, military bases. They don't want you. United States of America military bases in their country. Yes, Nigeria does not want this. We've seen military bases being uh, uprooted, being taken down uh, in Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, my three favorite African countries, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso. They kicked out the French uh, communist. Uh, no, they kicked out the French imperialistic uh, governance and they say we don't want any more of France we don't want your military bases we don't want any sort of this and guess what just as I started with the story of the Cold War right now the United States of America is being kicked out and Africans Africans are welcoming the Russians the Russians are being welcomed the United States is being kicked out you know and this this is what I call the domino effect because uh, it all started with Mali. Mali had a revolution. They kicked out their gov the puppet government. What followed was Niger. Niger striked against Russia, against, against France. What followed was Burkina Faso. When they saw Niger and Mali do the same, they decided also to uproot them. Now we have Ibrahim Traore, Africa's youngest president of Burkina Faso. These people were influenced by their neighbors. And this is where the domino effect falls. And now, these are West African states. We can now see Nigeria. Nigeria is now kicking out 
the perpetrators it's not picking up the imperialist this is a very powerful move unprecedented move i didn't expect nigeria to make such a move you know the history sometimes nigeria has a not so reliable history they are not so promising to africans but this move to reject u.s military bases and to take them out is really really important you know because the united states bases are going to bring a lot of uh, conflict with the neighbors you know once they bring the military bases in nigeria these military bases are going to be acting like proxy proxy locations where they are now going to attack those Wagner groups, those people who the military mercenaries that Russia has employed in African countries for security, they are going to fight them, you know, because now they will be close. Nigeria does not want this. This is what is likely to happen. The United States is trying to lengthen its arm, but Africa has said no. The only superpower that never colonized Africa was Russia. Yes, the reason why I'm saying it is a superpower, you know how great the USSR was. The USSR really helped in the liberation of South Africa. They fueled the ANC, they fueled many revolutions in Africa that led to their independence. Uh, the USSR also helped Tanzania gain independence, you know, and the USSR, after the fall of Germany, they came they implemented their ideas and what follows is that they also brought in their economic uh, implementations of socialism the kind of communism we have in tanzania is called socialism or ujamaa if you like now sitting back and thinking there is no benefit that u.s military bases will be bringing to africa we all know how it how this goes down we have read the script you know, Nigeria allowing U.S. military bases in Nigeria would be catastrophic. It will be catastrophic to itself. It will be catastrophic to the to its neighbors, and it will be catastrophic to the entire nation of Africa. We know how much harm they have done, and it's time we say, no, no, no. This has to end. This is we are not backing off anymore and thanks to the people of nigeria thanks to the president of nigeria tinubu tinubu you've done a great work this time i applaud you for your uh, good works now you as an african it's important that um, we vote and we elect leaders leaders who have our best interest at heart yeah it's it's so easy to say that but so hard to implement you know some leaders who we don't whom we vote we vote out of hunger we vote them out of hunger because they bring money for us like 500 shillings these 500 shillings will cost you five years you know and these people are going to be puppets puppets for the west they are only going to serve the interests of the west they are never going to serve the interest of the Africans. This is why I'm telling you that as Africans, what you should do is vote the right leaders, elect the right leaders, and let's work together with the right leaders, leaders who have our own interests at heart. And again, I'm surprised by what Nigeria has done. Nigeria has proved to us that even the bad kid can be a good kid sometimes. Congratulations, Nigeria, for standing strong against imperialism. Now look at where I'm passing through. Oh, yeah. ah, it's hard, but I have to pass through this, you know. Bad leaders are the ones who cause such problems. Look at this road. Tell me, what, what kind of road is this? An African leader who was elected has squandered money that was being used 
to construct the road. Now he's no more. He got rich and he left his work. These are the kind of things I'm speaking about. The kind of problems I'm speaking about. And you guys need to understand why it is important to elect the right leaders in Africa. Yes. Look at this now. Una pita. He was he was gentleman enough to allow me to pass. This is not what we want for Africans. We want an Africa, an Africa that will not be poor in the next coming future in the next coming years, in the future. We want a free Africa, a developed Africa, and we can do this through one union, one Africa, doing away with the imperialists. Yes. So, without further ado, see you in the next video, where we'll have another critical analysis. Bye, and see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.